Hey everybody, today we're going to be installing Arc Server on Linux. So sit back and relax while we get this started. Let's put on some music. Alright, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start with installing Ubuntu 14.04 on my server. I'm using virtualization on my server, so I'm using Vert Manager to uh, create a new server. So the new server, we're going to go ahead and give it a name of dino.gamelikeus.com. We're going to use the 14.04 Linux server installation. We'll select Linux and Ubuntu 14.04. We're going to choose 8 gigs of RAM and 4 cores. So I'm going to go ahead and choose 100 gig for this installation. The game itself is about 25 to 30 gigs. So we'll go ahead and click create. What this is going to do, this is going to allocate some space on my server. 100 gigs, it's going to put that aside. It's going to set it up like it's its own server within the main server. If you purchase an Arc server from another company, they've done all this for you already. But if you want to set it up from scratch and you have your own server at home, or you have your own server that you have access to and you want to run an Arc server, this will show you how to do it from installing Ubuntu all the way to installing the Arc server files to the server. Now the server I'm running this on, it's a hex core, so it's got 12 cores total, and it's got 24 gigs of RAM, so it has plenty of space to run this server. Alright, it looks like it's created it. All I have to do is put in my credentials here and it'll take us through the installation. We're going to go ahead and choose English on here. Install the Ubuntu server and just click through the prompts. The next thing that we're going to see come up here is for the TCP IP configuration. If you have a static route or if you have a static IP address you'll put that IP address here for the server. You'll also put in your netmask and your gateway and then the name servers. This information you can get from your local ISP, whoever you uh, have your internet with and they can give you that information. I've set up a user for this server plus my password. We're going to go ahead and use the whole disk and I'm just using the whole disk for this tutorial because it's the easiest method. I'm not saying it's the best method, I'm saying it's the easiest for this tutorial. If you're not used to Linux, it's the best way to do it. If you know Linux and you know how to set up the different partitions, please do so. We went ahead and said yes to the Grub bootloader. And once that installation has gone through, it'll knock us out. And then now we can easily log into the server with any terminal. First thing that you're going to want to do is run a sudo apt-get update. That resynchronizes the package indexes from their sources. Then you want to go ahead and do an upgrade. An upgrade will go ahead and download any of the files that the update command said it needs to update and it will install them into your system. So one of the things that we're going to need is the 32-bit binaries. So we're going to make sure that we go ahead and download those binaries. The 
think I put an L instead of a 1. Let me try that one again. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and create a directory for Steam. So MKDIR Steam CMD. Okay, go ahead and CD into that directory. Right now we're going to go ahead and download the Steam onto the server so that we're able to log into Steam and download the server files. I'll put the link down below of where you need to go to download. But we're going to go ahead and use wget to download the file and then we have to untar the file. Okay. Now that we've logged into the server, we're going to go ahead and change into the directory for Steam. If we list the files in there, we'll see the Steam command. So we'll run that Steam command, and then we'll log into Steam as anonymous. Alright, once we've logged into Steam as Anonymous, we're going to go ahead and force the install directory. Normally the install directory is going to be something like home slash your username slash arc server. And then we're going to run the app update 376030. And then we're going to write validate after that. And that should go through. and that should install everything for us. And as you can see here, it looks like it did go ahead and install everything for us. All right, so what we wanna do now is we wanna go ahead and create a file that's going to start the server whenever we want to start it. And I recommend doing this in the same folder of which the the application is going to be ran and that's going to be in arc server shooter game binaries Linux let's create a file called server underscore start dot sh okay so here what we want to do is we want to go ahead and in this bash file we're gonna say start this program shooter game server on the island we're gonna listen then the session name, then the session, the session name is going to be what you want to call your server. Okay, and then if there's a server password, you want to go ahead and put the server password in. If there's an admin password, you want to add the admin password in as well. And then you're going to, at the end, you're going to do dash server and then dash log. And we're going to go ahead and save this file. And then after that we save the file, we want to make sure that it's executable. So we want to run the chmod plus x on that file. And then all we have to do is actually, before we start the server, the better thing to do is to open up a screen session. So you want to type in screen and then you'll want to run that file. Because if you happen to close the terminal window, it's going to close down your server as well. If you guys have any questions, comments, please leave them down in the description below. I hope this video helped you out in getting your Arc server on Linux up and running. Thanks for watching.